If you've been in the bodybuilding space long enough, then you've probably heard of the famous V-Taper physique. And in this video, I'll go over three things you must know to obtain this physique and also go over the real truth about achieving this look. Number one, bone genetics. The truth about the V-Taper is the way your V-Taper will look depends on your bone structure because no matter how hard you train, you can't change your hip to waist length. The same goes for the length of your torso or the broadness of your shoulder bones. However, this doesn't mean that you can't get any V-Taper at all. It just means that certain parts of your body aren't trainable. For example, if you're built like Mario, you're not going to look like David Laid, meaning depending on how you your bill, you might have a harder time trying to achieve a certain look because your torso isn't long to begin with. Chances are, your collar and the rest of your body will be proportionate to your size, meaning if you've built up an idea of what you want to look like, it might not be possible to get that exact look. But that said, there are ways to actually create the illusion of a wider torso and having smaller hips and to get that Dorito shaped body that we all desperately want. Number two, muscle groups. What muscle groups do you need to train? I've divided this section into two categories, the primary and secondary muscle groups. The primary groups are the more important muscles and really give you the shape and overall look you want, while the secondary are there to complete the overall aesthetic and are less important when compared to the other muscle groups. But in order to see results, I recommend hitting your primary muscle groups at least twice a week to ensure you don't lose a lot of muscle once you start losing body fat. The first and most important muscle group will be your lats because this is where you get that cobra look from. It's an important muscle to hit because even if you have wide hips, the width of your lats is going to give you the impression of having a smaller waist by comparison. To train them, you can do deadlifts, dumbbell rows, barbell rows, incline dumbbell row, pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs, landmine rows, dumbbell pullovers, and inverted bodyweight rows. The second most important muscle group are going to be the shoulders, simply because, again, if you have a short torso and your shoulders aren't very wide, having bolder shoulders like Derek here will give you the impression of having a wider frame than you actually do. The most important deltoid is arguably going to be your side delt or your lateral deltoid. This will contribute the most to your torso looking broader. However, that being said, you must train all of them, not only for looks, but also just for shoulder health in general, because if you don't, it might cause some serious injuries in the future, and it wouldn't look very good from an aesthetic standpoint. You will want to hit these muscle groups twice a week, because once you get to a body fat percentage low enough, you're going to have to work even harder to keep your muscle that you've built up over time. For shoulder exercises, you can do lateral raises, dumbbell front raises, seated or standing shoulder press, Arnold presses, cable lateral raise, face pulls, and reverse flies. The third most important muscle group will be your core, but the obliques being the priority, along with your lower abs. Your middle abs and upper abs are also going to be important, but take less priority because once you hit a certain weight, your middle and upper abs will become very noticeable in comparison to the rest of your core. The obliques will be the most important because this is the muscle largely responsible for giving you a smaller looking waist. A lot of people have the misconception that if you train your obliques and core, it will give you more mass on your mid and lower section, which isn't entirely wrong, but once you get shredded enough, and hit these muscles, you will more than likely see that muscle mass you added will actually work better for you. Especially since the obliques are the muscles that are responsible for giving you a tighter looking waist, and the minimal muscle mass added will actually make your physique better than if you didn't bother to train it. Everyone's body is gonna be different, so if you do have large hips and a large waist, you could maybe get away with doing the very bare minimum, especially if you're constantly activating your core in other workouts like you should be doing. But for most people, training your core is a good idea, not only for looks, but also for functionality and balance in your gym life and your life outside of the gym. The main takeaway is measure yourself and see what works best for you. Once you get shredded enough, you will notice what works best for your own body. For your core, the exercises you can do are the plank, the plank where you bring your knees across to the other shoulder, butterfly kicks, Russian twists, medicine ball slam, hanging leg raises, L-sit, and bear crawls. In short, if you're doing it correctly, most of your exercises will require some sort of core engagement for stability and support purposes. 
especially if you're doing something like calisthenics, because pretty much all of those exercises require some core activation to some degree. So you may not even really need to focus on hitting your core that often. You won't get visible abs until you become really lean and lowered your body fat percentage, which I'll go over later in the video. So keep that in mind going forward. Secondary groups are responsible mainly just to get the overall complete physique and aren't really needed to get the V taper shape. However, if you train them plus the other previously mentioned muscles, you will have a much more developed and proper looking physique. These muscle groups are the triceps, chest, and bicep. And no, not legs because honestly, who trains legs? What are you, a woman? For the chest, you can do bench press, barbell or dumbbell, incline bench press, decline bench press, machine chest press, cable cross flies, push ups, chest flies, or the dumbbell pullover. For the triceps, you can do skull crushers, diamond push ups, tricep dips, dumbbell overhead extensions, tricep pull downs, tricep dumbbell kickbacks. For the biceps, you can do barbell or easy bar curls, cable curls, dumbbell curls, chin ups, hammer curls, incline curls, preacher curls, concentration curls, and drag curls. Number three, body fat slash diet. Finally, the last thing you need to know about getting a V taper is the most common places where fat is stored is in your midsection and waist, resulting in things like love handles and buildups of fat, which is the exact opposite of what you want. Don't think you have bad genetics when you're built like a walrus, wondering why you can't get a V taper despite hitting all of these muscle groups. You won't know what muscle groups you need to focus on until you get to a low body fat percentage. And then you can prioritize which things you should be focusing on. So how you lose weight and get a smaller looking waist is through a calorie deficit. Your body has a certain number of calories it burns a day and being in a deficit is how you achieve fat loss over time. This all depends on many factors like age, gender, metabolism, etc. There's a bunch of free calculators you can use to figure out what your maintenance calories are. And then from there, you put yourself in a slight calorie deficit between 200 and 300 calories below what you need. Consistently, over a period of time, you will start to see that you are losing weight. Then once you start to stagnate, you can drop it another 200 to 300 pounds until you've achieved a weight that you're comfortable with. The safest and best way to do it is slowly over a period of time losing about one pound per week. At the same time, you will also want to maintain your muscle mass. So ensure that you're getting one pound of protein per pound of body weight and focus on strength training, meaning less reps and more weight to ensure you don't lose any muscle mass. And also it will have the added benefit of giving you a more ripped and toned body while also maintaining your strength. In conclusion, you might not look exactly how you want to. However, it doesn't mean that people, including yourself, will not be able to notice the work you put in. But you should be proud of where you are compared to when you first started your journey. Even if you're a short king, every day you work out, you look a lot less like Danny DeVito and more like Asta from Black Clover.